Hey everyone, welcome back to Pond Solo Fishing. So today we are gonna get super nerdy with our fishing. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is a topic that usually only professional anglers are gonna um, dig into, all right? But it is something that is so easy to learn and so easy to find out information about and to track that it is a fantastic way to help you catch more fish. So one of the big things that you hear people talk about is, oh man, I got skunked. I did everything I could. I was rolling those banks. I was hitting the brakes. I was going under logs. I was using natural. I was using artificial. Nothing was biting. I was deep diving. I was mid diving. I was top water, worms, bugs. Nothing was working. Well, one of the big reasons why nothing might've been working is because you weren't looking at the weather. And I don't mean the actual weather outside, whether it's raining, thundering, lightning, and all that. I don't necessarily mean that. I mean the barometric pressure, all right? Now, if you live in the South, you've probably heard of barometric pressure because that's how we measure hurricanes and the intensity of those hurricanes, all right? But you probably haven't heard about it nearly as much as if you're further up North, all right? However, fish are impacted by it everywhere. And the reason why is because the barometric pressure is something that the fish feel inside of their their air bladder, all right? So the air bladder is inside the fish and that's what regulates the fish on it going up, down, throughout the tables, things like that, okay? Higher barometric pressure means happy, healthy fish. That higher pressure puts pressure on their air bladder, they feel comfortable. When it is too low, their air bladder expands, they feel uncomfortable. It's kind of the same idea as if we're like, if we're kind of gassy feeling, we just don't feel right. When you don't feel right, what do you do? You lay down, you get lethargic, you stop eating. You don't wanna, you know, you may be snacking a little bit, but you're not super aggressive about it. I'm not driving to go get food if I don't feel good. However, if I feel fantastic, I'll say, hey, let's go out there and get some food. I might still nibble here and there, but I'm not gonna be eating the big meals. I'm not gonna be nearly as aggressive about it. Same thing happens with fish when they don't feel good. And I don't want you to think it means they're sick. I mean, they just feel discomfort, like a gassy kind of feel. Not, it's natural. They feel it all the time, but it is part of uh, what determines whether or not they're gonna bite and how aggressively they're gonna go after that bite. Again, you can still get bites during those times. They just might not be as aggressive, all right? So when we talk about barometric pressure, there's this is something that you can find on any weather app. So you can download any of the weather apps, you can find it online, just look it up. Um, I use uh, the Weather Channel personally, but there's a lot of different ones you can find. You can also buy a weather station at Bass Pro or any major retailer because again, it's a major thing that can determine fish bite. So big time anglers, competitors, they're gonna use these things. So you'll see them there and now you know why. So when we're talking about the barometric pressure, typically 30, is kind of considered normal, all right? But also keep in mind that 27 is kind of your baseline, your, your, the bottom. So there's not much of a big range there. So somebody might say, oh, it's only it's only a 28 barometric pressure, 30 is good, that sounds great. It's actually not good, okay? Because it, it doesn't take much to offset that, okay? So 30 is considered normal, that's kind of your baseline. Then storm, like a storm coming in would be about 29 and a half. See how little difference there in variation? kind of the max you would see would be 30.5, 30.7, okay? So there's not a lot of variation between them. So storm coming in, 29.5, big storm, like hurricane, you're looking at like 27-ish, all right? That's when the fish are really just super, super uncomfortable, all right? So you want those fish to be somewhere near 30 at all times, but these fish are gonna sense this coming in. So let's say that barometric pressure is at 30 and it drops really, really quickly. The faster it drops, the more uncomfortable they're gonna be. So the more surprising that storm is, the faster moving the storm is, the stronger, faster moving storms like a hurricane, it's gonna quickly change how well those fish bite, okay? And then people will ask, well, how long does it take to resolve? It depends on how fast it goes back up. But generally speaking, the bite is gonna be the strongest about two days, sometimes three days following a storm. Some people will say that they'll notice it right away, but generally the strongest bite is gonna be two to three days after the storm, because that's when it gets back up to that normal uh, barometric pressure, all right? Now, if you're out there fishing already 
and you said, you know what, I'm not getting any bites and you just happen to catch this video, you're like, ah, oh, man, I'm screwed. Not technically, all right? Because the same way that humans react and everything when they're hungry or when they're annoyed, fish will react the same way, okay? So if you're super, super annoyed and somebody's just bugging you, 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 and you have somebody in your face, you're gonna snap eventually. Same thing happens with fish. So the reason why you're gonna get bites with low barometric pressure oftentimes isn't because they're hungry. It's not because they're actively trying to eat. It's because you just pissed them off. So I mean, just smacked them in the face one too many times. Maybe it's in, they're irritated, they're super annoyed, so it's right there in their face. So that's why right before a storm and right after a storm, you're gonna get bites in those situations. They're probably just pissed off at you. You just got that thing right in their face, right in the right spot, and you annoyed the hell out of them, they just bit it, okay? They're probably not actively feeding. The only time they, they would be actively feeding is if they have a small air bladder, and in that case, they might be searching for food because they're not as impacted. So bigger the air bladder, the, the bigger impact. Smaller the air bladder they have, smaller the impact, okay? But even the ones with small air bladders, they're impacted by the fact that all the bait fish, which have bigger air bladders, are impacted by it. So you really kind of have to look at it. Everybody's impacted in some way. It just depends on how they're impacted and you know just to what level and, and, and all that. So, so again, if you want to go out fishing and you've got a couple days to choose from, and you say, okay, barometric pressure on Thursday is a 30. It's a you know it's probably supposed to go down and come towards a storm and everything as the weekend rolls in. Go on the day with 30. If it's already got good barometric pressure, hit it up. That's your best opportunity to get a bite. Otherwise, you're trying to get a piss off bite which works great the salmon fishing. That's the whole part of salmon fishing when they're spawning is you're just getting a pissed off bite. You're not getting them feeding because they're not feeding. They're just pissed off. So if it works for salmon fishing, it can work for bass fishing, it can work for any type of fish. But you're much more likely to get an aggressive, hungry, I want to eat this thing bite when that barometric pressure is high. All right, something to think about, again, it's all up to you. You can catch fish any time of year, any season, any type of weather, but these kind of tools and everything, they're meant to kind of give you some additional help. Okay, I'm not biting, why? Now you have some science to back up why it might be harder. And that might change up how you do things. So rather than just trying to slowly run things by them, maybe you just might start smacking things in those pads. Piss them off, get them mad, get them angry. Maybe instead of using a single hook, you're gonna throw a treble in there um, just because you're trying to piss them off. Maybe throw a bunch of like jingly jangly stuff, super crazy colors. That kind of stuff will piss them off. So chatterbaits, throw those babies in there. Throw things with all kinds of flares, glitter, all that kind of stuff. That's your low pressure fishing lure that you want to use. That's the presentation you want to use. You want to, I want to piss you off fishing presentation. High pressure, hey, throw something out there that looks yummy. Yo, look at this shad. Shad's gonna look good. Fluke gonna look good. Make that thing crawl nice and slow so they're looking at it like, dang, I want that shad. That's what you want with higher pressure. It's a different type of fishing. And knowing that is gonna help you catch a lot more fish. Um, I can't promise it'll help you catch bigger fish, but it'll definitely help you catch more fish because now you know the science behind what they're doing and why they're doing. All right, so make sure you guys hit the like button. That's all I have to say on this topic. If you guys have any questions about it, I have fishing level knowledge on it, but there's plenty of information on the internet if you wanna to go to some of these hurricane websites and check it out. Lots of apps you can download. Definitely worth checking out. If nothing else, it's a nice little extra piece of knowledge to have when you go out there fishing. Don't stress yourself out about it. You can catch fish anytime, but again, it might change how you try to target a fish, and that's the goal. Hit the like button, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell so that you get reminded whenever I send out a new post, whenever I make a new blog post. And of course, you guys have a great day. Good luck fishing out there.